All right, now the rules, tables, and graphs. This is something we're going to use in mathematics for the rest of time. So it's something, it's something very important to understand. It's really useful when it comes to graphing data and extrapolating, kind of predicting what's going to happen from a set of data. Um, and this one looks at a linear relationship. So let's start from the very beginning, a very good place to start. A rule is an equation that describes the relationship between two or more variables. So you've got y on one side, x on the other side, how do they relate to each other? A linear relationship, linear line, will result in a straight line graph. So we're going to show you that. For two variables, a linear rule is often written with y as a subject. For example, y equals 2x minus 3, or y equals negative x plus 7. So we say y is the subject because what we're solving for is essentially y. So one way to graph a linear relationship using a rule is to follow these steps. We make a table, and we find the values of the y-coordinate for each of the given x-coordinates by substituting each x into the rule. All right. Then we plot the points, then we draw a line through the points, and if we have a straight line, then we've proven our linear relationship, and that rule works. So now we're going to construct the table, and we're going to draw a graph based on the rule y equals 2x minus 1. So let's, let's remind ourselves what the x and y axes are. x runs this way, and y runs up to the sky. And in, this is the first quadrant here, second, third, and fourth quadrants. So the first quadrant is always going to be positive numbers. Starting from O, the origin, or 0, we move forward 1, 2. You can move by 2s, you can move by 5s. Uh, positive in this way on the x, and positive on this way on the y. I'm not sure how far we'll go. We'll stop at 5. And then we'll get into the third quadrant. Everything's negative. So down from 0 on the y is negative 2, negative 3. I did negative 1, of course, to start with, and they just go in order. And on the x-axis is the same thing. Going left is negative 1, 2, 3, negative 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this rule and construct a table based on what we know. So uh, I'm looking at the data that I have, and it looks like I've got pretty much, I'll, I'll stick to these. And I'm going to put in x from negative 3 to negative 2. They're all going to go forward by 1. You don't really need to do this many points. Ms. Rafferty will show you how to do it with fewer points than this, but it's just important for you to get that relationship that these are all going ahead, moving one point at a time by 1. All right, so let's do it. So if we know that our rule is y equals 2 times x, that's what that means, minus 1, then I can substitute for x. y equals, if x is negative 3, I replace or substitute that one. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, minus 1 is the same as saying there, negative 6 plus negative 1, gives us negative 7. So in this case, if x is negative 3, then y is negative 7. And that allows us to plot that point on our graph. So the points I'm putting are x is negative 3 and y is negative 7. And remember, they always go in alphabetical order, x and then y. So x is negative 3, y is negative 7, takes us down to here. And I'll do one more, and then I'll do a little speedier version so we can go a little faster. So now let's try a different one. We'll use the same formula, y equals 2x minus 1. And this time we'll substitute negative 2 for x, the next one on our, our chart, minus 1. 2 times negative 2 gives us negative 4. Positive and negative together uh, make a negative. And then that gives us y equals negative 4. Take away 1 is negative 5. So when we have negative 2 on x, which is here, and negative 5 on y, which is here, we get a point there. So you're starting to see a pattern here, I hope. Now I'm going to quickly go through and do the rest of them. Here I go. Okay, and now that I have all of those uh, points plotted out, I should be able to go through and plot all of those points on the graph, and if I've done my calculations right, I should see a straight line. Let's see what happens. Okay, there we go. You can see if I connect these, get my ruler out. And we've got a straight line through all of those, so we must have done our calculations correct. So you may have noticed up here that we know that x is increasing by 1 each time, but there's also a similar pattern with y. I wonder if you can see it. And y is increasing as x increases by 1. 
y is actually increasing by 2 each time, which is funny. And that's where that coefficient comes from of 2x in our rule, because y is moving ahead to positive 2, and the minus 1 comes from the value of y when x is 0. So we can look for similar patterns, or we can just use the rule itself to decide if these points would be on that line. And so I could go through and I could figure out what that pattern is. Let's see, we go to negative 2. So if that's negative 2, negative 4, that would be negative 1, that would be 0, that would be 1, and we know that's 3. I could do all that, but why don't we just use the rule that we have? If it's going to be on the line, then it's going to be true. It's going to work out. So let's substitute. First, we'll substitute x as 1 and y as 3. So we're going to see if this point is actually going to be on that line. And 3 times 1 is 3. 3 equals 3, so that works out as true. So yes, that one would be on the line. Now let's try the other one. The other one we're given is negative 2, negative 4. So where x is negative 2, because it's always x then y for these coordinates, the 3 times negative 2 would be equal to y, which is negative 4. Now if I work out negative 2 uh, times 3, I get negative 6. So that is a false relationship. So this one is not going to be on that graph. Isn't that cool? So if it works out when you substitute it, then it will be on the graph. I hope that gives you a starting place to get some work done.